and welcome to The Primary Storyline, a video series about post-production as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10 motion and compressor. My name is Andrew Gormley, and I will be your host. In this episode, we'll be working on something that I did offhandedly in a previous video that people really wanted more information on, applying a mask for color correction. This is great for creating a stylized effect, like letting a single color show through, or subtly enhancing just a single color's properties without affecting the rest of the image. I tend to use this a lot for outdoor shoots where I've exposed what's happening on the ground, resulting in the sky getting blown out. This also works great for interviews where you wanna use color correction to draw attention to the subject's face. So to get started, we have this project open right here, which is Shape Mask for Interviews. And what I've done is edited down just a portion of this footage right here. So the first thing you wanna do is open both your inspector and your effects panel, and then drag color correction onto your clip. From here, you want to go up into the inspector and under Color Correction 1, hover over this icon for masks, click it, and then choose Add Shape Mask. So you'll see right away that the mask actually appears right in the viewer. Now you can click it and drag it to move it around and reposition it. And then you can also directly interact with its shape in a couple of different ways. So these green dots will allow you to change the width and the height respectively. This gray dot allows you to change the shape from a circle to a rectangle. This middle area will allow you to grab this handle and then rotate the entire mask. And if you drag further out while holding down, you can have a more fine adjustment of rotation. And then finally, this outer control here is for the feather, which determines how drastically your mask falls off. A couple quick tips right here. If you hold shift while editing the size of a green dot, you can make them all scale at the same time. Also, if you hold shift while rotating, you'll move in increments of about 1 8 So with all that out of the way, I'm going to just resize the mask to roughly fit the shape of her face and then feather it down so that it doesn't go too far outside of her actual head. So let's go right here, I can rotate, do this. And then we'll bring the feather in just a bit to right about there. So once the mask is done, let's open the color board. I want you to take note of something that's immediately different here, and that is this area for mask, where we have inside and outside. Now, when we apply color corrections, we're doing it to two different places. So we can apply color corrections directly to the inside of the mask, and then also to the outside of the mask. The first thing I like to do for these types of corrections is under the exposure tab, I like to drop the shadows down just a little bit, and then raise the mids. And again, this is affecting the inside of the mask. For something a little bit more drastic, let's click outside and notice that the pucks change because we are affecting different areas of our image. On the outside, let's just grab global and drag that down negative eight or nine. Now we can go back to the inspector, turn off our mask controls, which are right here, and then see what this looks like as we preview it on and off. you can see a pretty drastic difference from before and after. You'll have to adjust to taste on your own footage because color correction is super subjective, but this is a very powerful way to shape light in post. Another example of shape masks coming in handy would be for landscape or aerial shots, so something like this. So this shot was taken directly off of the drone. It's basically log. Uh, the white balance wasn't quite right, and I would not deliver this to client as is. So let me run through a very quick color correction and hopefully we can get this closer to where we need it to be. So I'm going to press Command-6 on my keyboard to bring up the color board for this clip and I will press Command-7 on my keyboard to bring up the scopes. At this point, the first thing I would do is bring the exposure down a bit, lower the shadows, um, boost the highlights a little bit, and then maybe lower the mids. And then under saturation, I think probably just globally, I'd raise the saturation here. And because the white balance was wrong, it's still a little yellow. So under color, I'm actually just going to grab the global puck and subtract a little yellow. Yep, that cooled it off. So again, I'm going to press Command-7 on my keyboard. 
and there we go. So this is a much nicer clip now. And again, this looks pretty good, but the sky could use a little bit of work. It looks lifeless. Luckily, we have a horizon that is pretty much uniform across the duration of this clip. If we look, it doesn't change too drastically. And this is where a shape mask would really come in handy. So let me step back to the inspector. And this is our primary grade. So what we're gonna do is add a secondary color correction. Now on this color correction too, I wanna to add a shape mask. And again, I'm covering something that's basically shaped like a rectangle. So I'm going to resize this mask to do so. And I'm gonna zoom out a bit because we're gonna go off the canvas with this one. So let me rotate this and I'll shrink it down a bit. And essentially what we wanna do is line it up with the horizon as close as we can. Make sure it covers everything like that. Now what I want to do is I don't want the mask to stop right at the horizon. I want it to feather off. So I'm actually gonna move my mask up a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna adjust the feather to just kind of encompass everything right down to the edge of the sky right here. And that looks pretty good. So now we'll open the color board just for this mask. And under color, I know the first thing I wanna do when dealing with a daytime sky is that you're mostly dealing with midtones and highlights. So I'm gonna take the midtones and just drag them up to be a little bit more blue, maybe somewhere right about there. And then I will swing over to saturation. And again, because we're dealing with midtones and highlights, we wanna just adjust those and not worry too much about shadows. So let me bring the midtones up to maybe right about there. And I can bring the highlights up to, and again, this is all for taste maybe right about there. Now again, if we go back to the inspector and we turn off the mask controls and then we preview this on and off, you could see that our sky is dramatically bluer and it's kind of reflected in the water, which makes a lot of sense. That's probably a little bit closer to what I was seeing that day. Now, I could see that the feathering isn't quite going as far down as I'd want, so I'll turn those mask controls back on and just drag this a little bit more. And then we've mitigated a lot of that gray that was happening right there at the horizon. So I really like that. So here is what the clip looked like when we started. And in just two or three minutes, we got it looking like that, which is amazing. Shape masks are a really, really great way to just go a little bit of an extra mile for a shot like this. So let's take a look at color masks now. These allow you to sample and mask a pixel or a range of pixels based on their color value. So let me open this one right here, color masking one. And we'll zoom out to 100% for this. In this shot, let's say I only want the red boxes right here that say great conversations because I wanna change their color. Well, we begin the same way we have for the past two clips, which is we drag color correction on here. And then up under color correction, click on the masks tab and then choose add color mask. Now, if you mouse over the video in the viewer, you'll see that we have an eyedropper tool. Let's just click on the red and see what happens. So, <laughs> there was a brief moment where something happened, but it's difficult to tell what. And luckily, we can take a closer look by clicking on the view masks text in the inspector right here. So, looking at this very quickly, our eyedropper select did an okay job of isolating the red boxes but the masks are really uneven. It doesn't look great. And that's true because there's light variation from the top to the bottom of the shot and things like that, but we can do a much better job. So I'm going to turn the preview off and then press Command Z to undo that and show you a much better way. The first thing I'll do is zoom in and let's go with 400%. And then we just need to choose a box. So let's go with this one that's right next to her face right here, Great Conversations. So what you wanna do is get a center point that is surrounded by a lot of the color and then click and hold. And now you can begin to drag to select more of that color. See, this is a lot like our shape mask. There's a feathered area around our initial color sample. Everything you've selected will be saturated and everything outside of your selection will be in black and white. So what we wanna do is grab as much of the color as possible without touching any other colors. So. I'll show you what happens when you go just a little bit too far. There we've gotten white, and now we've started to select some of the blue of the backdrop. And as we keep going, we've selected more of the backdrop and more and more and more. And we can just continue to go 
And there's our picture. We've selected every color basically in this image. So essentially we want to bring this right back down till we get everything except that white right there. And then just simply release your mouse. So if we preview this mask now, you'll see that it's a much cleaner mask. Although this area over here isn't looking too great. Let's see why. We turn this off. It's because she's actually casting a shadow. So this red falls outside the color range of this red right here. But this is very easy to fix because we can just add to our mask. So if I drag over to this area, we can focus our efforts on this color range. All you want to do is hold down shift and then click and drag again like we just did. And you'll see that we're covering more of the color right there. Again, you want to get as much as you can without selecting that white area. So we'll do that. And then I see that this area maybe. See, that's too much. And now we're selecting things like inspiration. So we don't want to do that. Actually, even here, we're selecting a little bit of inspiration because there's a color overlap there. But that's OK. I'll show you how to mitigate that as well. So if we zoom out after that and we view our masks, that's pretty clean. We do have some color overflow, but that's not a problem. We can fix that. Let's just go through some of the things we could do now that we've selected this range of colors. So I'm going to turn the masks off and go to our color board. And let's say that I go to color and I didn't like them as red. I want them to be purple. So I'm just going to grab the global puck and move it over to purple. And you see right there, we've actually just changed all of the colors in one shot. We simply mask them and then change them. And you can see that update in real time as I drag around, which is pretty trippy, but it's kind of a really cool effect. Let's say somewhere maybe in this area. That doesn't look too unnatural. Another option that works great in these instances, if we go to saturation and then choose everything outside the mask and then drag saturation all the way down, we have desaturated everything except our boxes, which is a pretty cool effect, although it can be overused, so, you know, go lightly. I am going to go ahead and reset that right now. So you can even stack your masks to prevent color overflow like we're seeing right here, or simply just for effect. So for instance, I only wanted to change the color of maybe this red box right here. We can absolutely do that by adding a shape mask. So if I go back and on the same correction, I click here, and add a shape mask, you could see that it actually instantly updated. So these revert it back to red, and these are pink. This one kind of gradiates because it's in the feathered area. So all I want to do is resize the mask to just this one. And that's basically how you take care of that. So you could see that this one that falls within both masks is the one that's changed. If I dragged it over here, it would change that one, or that one, or that one, or that one. So it's a really powerful way to really isolate just a portion of your image based on color and shape. And that brings us to our final example, which is this. When you isolate just a single color from a wide or narrow array and track with it, you can create an incredible visual. You may have heard of this referred to as the Pleasantville effect, but a more contemporary example would be Breaking Bad season two, which had several flash forward sequences in which a pink teddy bear was isolated against a backdrop of black and white. And it was stunning when done right. So the first thing I wanna do is play this clip back so we can get an idea of the motion that's happening. Okay, so I want to place my playhead at the very beginning of this clip. And what I want to do is desaturate everything except this logo right here, only on this award. So the first part of this will be using a color mask. So what I'm going to do is get our color correction on there. And I want to add a color mask. And I'm going to zoom in to make sure because there is a gradation on this award. So I'll click and drag a little bit. And then I'll hold shift and click and drag a little more. And then down here, click and drag a little more. Make sure I got as much as possible. So if I zoom out now, 
and I preview the mask, you'll see that uh, the one in the middle is a pretty good sample. It's quite sharp. And then we've also got basically every other one. And then some of the fabric that the awards are actually resting on because they are within that color range. So here's where we'll add the shape mask to limit our selection to just that middle one. So again, I'll just click here and choose add shape mask. And I will make it a rectangle. And we will get it mostly where we need to be. Something like that. And we're going to make the fallout very narrow because there's a lot of red surrounding us here. So now if we view the mask, we've done it. Okay, so we are actually going to need to track because look at our mask. Our mask moves off and it just goes into the middle of nowhere. So the first thing we want to do is actually apply our effect. So on the color board, let's go to saturation outside the mask and bring it down. Great. Now, if we play it back, we'll see that we slowly desaturate, which is kind of a cool effect, but it would be cooler <laughs> if that red didn't show up right there. So let's track. In order to do that, it's very easy. We're just going to add a keyframe right here. And then what I'm going to do on my keyboard is press shift right arrow to jump 10 frames, reposition my mask, and continue this process throughout the move. Okay, I'll go to the last one and just make sure that our mask is in the right spot here. That looks okay. I'll just move that right there just to make sure. So now if we play it back with both of our masks intact and tracking, you get an effect that looks like this. Whew, with that little overlap of this award right here at the end and it tracks away, that is perfect. Thank you for watching. If you found it useful, please give it a good rating on iTunes or subscribe on YouTube as it will help others join our Motley crew. If you have any questions or an idea of something you'd like to see covered, you can reach out via the website at theprimarystoryline.com or email theprimarystoryline at gmail.com. I will see you all on the next episode of The Primary Storyline. Make something epic.